Were you truthful with us today? I, I was as truthful as, as I, as, you know, I'm knowledgeable to be. There's, there's, there's some things I wish I knew more about, but yes, I was. Welcome to an all new episode of the McFuture podcast, challenging the beliefs that run the world. I'm Steve Factor, and today I want to talk to you about the next Warren Buffett. The hero right now of the industry, there's comparisons to Warren Buffett back in the financial crisis. The next J.P. Morgan. Described as the J.P. Morgan, if you will, of the crypto business. The Michael Jordan of crypto. The next John D. Rockefeller. And look at this fellow rock back and forth, back and forth. That's right. Sam Bankman Freed, founder of FTX and Alameda Investing, has been smeared and smirched and besmirched all the different smirches in the media and has finally been arrested on all kinds of charges of wire fraud, regular fraud without wires, many, many kinds of fraud. This is an alternate history of Sam Bankman Freed. And I posit to you today, not only is Sam innocent of all of these charges, but he is indeed an American hero. Let's start with what matters most, celebrities. Celebrities are being sued because they endorsed FTX. It's impossible to believe that Giselle Bunchen would ever be affiliated with anything but the finest quality products and services. Bunchen stands for quality. Sometimes she sits, but mostly stands. Sometimes she walks as well. And other heroes like Tom Brady, Steph Curry, Shaquille O'Neal, even Larry David are getting sued because they endorsed FTX crypto services. Now, Larry David is a man who's so good. He's got two first names. That doesn't just happen by accident. And who else could you possibly imagine getting financial advice from besides celebrities? They've dribbled. They've gone to space. They've pretended to be every character you can imagine. Why can't you imagine them being your financial advisors, giving you wonderful advice on how to amass a fortune well beyond your imagination? That's what celebrities can do. And indeed they did. And it's only with the magic of crypto that you can become rich. Crypto, by being unreal, is really the only thing that truly is real. At a time when companies believe in nothing, why can't we believe that nothing can be a company? Think about it. That brings me to FTX, one of the greatest companies in the history of capitalism. FTX did not even exist until 2019. In three short years, it came to be valued at $32 billion. Let's see your stupid grandpa do that with his muffler shop or grocery store. Do you have any idea how many grocery stores you can buy with $32 billion? All of them, every single grocery store. That's right. Sam Bankman Freed can buy and sell all of your grandfathers. But Sam chose not to do that. So how did Sam become so rich? As all great things in history, it began with Koreans. No, not the Kim Jong-un type. I'm talking Gangnam style. Sam, in 2017, noticed that there was a discrepancy between the price of Bitcoin in Korea and the price in the U.S. because of the timing difference in the markets. So Sam, being the brilliant genius that he was, started trading on that arbitrage and became incredibly successful. This attracted capital and lots of beautiful women. Hey, whoop, whoop. Sam was ready to go big time. Except, at some point, everyone else caught on. The arbitrage was gone. Other financial people honed in on Sam's action. Horrible, awful people. T. 
taking food from this poor young man's mouth. Sam wasn't going to rest on his laurels. He decided it was time to get our money as well. And venture capitalists tripped over themselves, giving him $1.8 billion over the course of two years to build FTX. When FTX raised $420 million, yep. from a long list of you know storied investors. Yep. 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 Did investors know that $300 million of that went to you? It didn't go to me personally. It went to Alameda and it was a small fraction of the amount that to Alameda. Yep. And it was a small fraction of the amount that Alameda had just spent buying Binance out. But also I, I believe that we did inform investors. And Sam in his wisdom, he knew he couldn't run Alameda and FTX. So he found this brilliant, beautiful young lady, Caroline, like a princess, she would manage the kingdom. And the, does that make sense? Do princesses manage kingdoms? Nevertheless, she would manage Alameda, independent of FTX, of course. Sure, they lived in the same house. Sure, Sam owned 90% of Alameda. Sure, they used the same bank accounts for wire transfers. Sure, Sam and Caroline dated, but they knew that to have the trust of the people, they must keep things separate and separate, they did keep them. I have not been very involved in Alameda. And Caroline was no slouch. She too was a prodigy. She worked in an industry where everyone was using math, but she would not. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. She refused to use math because math is for dummies. Caroline was no dummy. She was so good, in fact, that Sam looked at her one day and said, you know, Caroline, I'm gonna give you an extra 10 or $20 out of FTX and you can invest that money too. You're so good, you, you wouldn't even know how to lose money. I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> 10 to 20 billion dollars he gave her of investor money. Investors who weren't, let's say, in the know that their money was being used this way. But no matter, the magic coins would only get more magical until that one fateful day when they stopped going up. The magic took a break and... Sam did not lose his confidence. He knew Caroline would get it back for him. So he gave her more and more of the money that was stored at FTX. Sure, the people didn't know, but what they don't know can't hurt them. In fact, it's a saying that's been around for like thousands of years. Why would it be a saying if it wasn't true? Everyone knows that. Sam certainly did. And that's when Sam began shaking. Like what you're saying is maybe there's some donations that you have made that you wouldn't make if you knew they were going to be immediately public. Sure. It seems like he might be high on Adderall or nervous or guilty of something. But no, Sam was minting crypto. That's how you do it. It's just good science. Sam started minting his own coin, the FTT. This coin, more magical than the others, would replace all of the money that had been loaned and lost by Alameda. Did you ever second guess the decision to use low float coins as legitimate collateral for loans? Why did you think that that was appropriate? You know, was it even worth it having some of those coins available at all as collateral? I mean, in retrospect, no, certainly. Got it. Um, in retrospect, like, we should have probably just had a thinner list to begin with. And when people would check in and say, hey, do you have our money? Sam could confidently say yes, because even though it wasn't the same exact money, it wasn't the cash or the coins that people bought, but it was the FTT token, a bespoke currency he made with his own flesh and blood. Isn't that so much better? Dollar bills are, are generally 
fungible. Anyone can have money. These coins are all the same. But Sam's coin was unique. It was bespoke. It was couture. It was like taking a painting of Whistler's mother and replacing it with an even better painting of Whistler's mother as drawn in by children with crayons and disabilities. Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth! He knew the market's going to pick up. He'll return it double, thruple, sextuple. It's just a matter of time. And the whole time, no matter how rocky things got, Sam never forgot about his staff. And by staff, I mean his raging nerd chubby. That's right, Sam would have nonstop team building, team boning exercises at his home where all of his lieutenants lived and made love. Beautiful, beautiful love. There were even rumors of a sex tape. What's more body positive than bodies you're positive? Look like this. Sam wasn't only leading a multi-billion dollar organization. He was also modeling body positivity. No one has spoken out about this or given him the credit he deserves. It's the reason nude beaches only feature people you'd pay to put their clothes back on, to help us confront our internalized body bigotry. And Sam knew this. He grew up in a home where such things were encouraged. Nudity was everywhere. His parents were hippies. They exposed him to all kinds of exposure. And Sam internalized it so we can fight our own battles. Sam was so virtuous. Investors didn't even care that he had no board of directors. They didn't care that his auditor lived in the metaverse. Oh, I'm not joking. He lived in the metaverse. I'm not even sure it's a he. It could be some exotic pronoun no one's ever heard of because it's in the metaverse. They didn't even figure out that his accountant's address was somewhere in the metaverse. <laughs> I mean, at, at a minimum, you check out who the guy's auditor is and say, who's right. your auditor? Oh, my auditor's name is is the pep boy, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Okay, what's his address? Somewhere in the metaverse. Is this a joke? No, I'm being serious. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely that can't be true that the auditor of FTX was located in the metaverse, but checking their official bankruptcy filings, that is the case. And Sam's chief regulatory officer was involved in an insider cheating scandal at a company called Ultimate Bets, which was a gambling site. And as we know, crypto is nothing like gambling, not at all. Don't even think it. Don't you, don't, don't you, don't you dare. Sam also liked to use a back door. Sorry, Caroline. I mean, he had a back door system into Alameda and FTX where he could change financial records. He could move money around undetected. I'm not sure exactly what people are referring to when they talk about the back door. He had God mode and why not? He was a god among us. All heroes need privacy. Even Superman had to dress up like Clark Kent. Spider-Man had to dress up like Tobey Maguire. So their genius doesn't get corrupted by the world and they could walk among us. And even though Sam admits he didn't know how to code, he still had the code to our hearts and to Alameda's and FTX's backend systems. And by all accounts, Sam, was a wonderful human being. How do we know that? From maybe the most trusted source on earth, Nas. No, not Nas the rapper, or Little Nas X, the gayer, younger rapper. Nas, the internet influencer who had cameras, who had editing equipment, who had an internet connection. He knew Sam could be trusted. But Sam is not a traditional billionaire because he believes in the concept of earn 
to give. Which means his goal as a human is to make as much money as possible just to give it away. Earn to give. And that's exactly what he's doing. So let's say that you have $100 and you want to figure out what you can do with it to help the world. Earning to Give is thinking about which causes, which charities save the most lives per dollar. This $100 can go as far as it possibly can to help the world. Last year, this 29-year-old guy donated $50 million. Next year, he's planning to donate $500 million a year. And next decade, he will probably give away more than $10 billion. Nas would not take a penny from Sam to say these beautiful, wonderful words about him. So Sam's Make-A-Wish was simple to make as much money with his money, which used to be your money, that became his money, and invest it in saving the world. And what is the best way to save the world? Democrats. Sam gave $50 million to Democrats because everybody knows only Democrats save worlds. Thanos was a Republican, huge Reagan donor. The Avengers, they saved the world. All of them, Democrats. Iron Man died for us, Democrat. Thor lost his hammer for us, Democrat. In fact, Thor had to bring a dildo to the club like everyone else because no hammer. These are just facts, my friends. Sam understood the game. He knew that you can't defeat climate change or Thanos simply with donations to Democrats or Thor's dildo. No, my friends. You also have to court the dark side. And as musician Nick Cave once said, goodness cannot be trusted unless it's breathed the same air as evil. And so Sam inhaled. All my Republican donations were dark. And the reason was not for regulatory reason. is because reporters freak the f out if you donate to a Republican, they're all super liberal and didn't want to have that fight. So I made all the Republican ones dark. Sam gave Republicans $37 million in dark money so that we may see the light. He knew that the world would not tolerate him publicly cavorting with demonic, evil, disgusting Republicans. We couldn't handle it. It's too much. So he had to do it under cover of night. He hid all that ugliness from us. How? Will we ever repay him? And some have already tried. Eight members of Congress wrote a letter to the SEC to stop the investigation of FTX. They knew that Sam was innocent. Why would you investigate someone who's innocent? Clearly. And sure, five of them received donations from Sam. One got 500,000 in their super PAC. But let us not put a price on innocence. Sam's generosity did not end with politics. Sam also invested in the community. I never owned very much property. He bought hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate in the Bahamas, the epicenter of innovation. In fact, many call it the original Silicon Valley. It's where they got the sand to make the silicon. And also some lovely glassware available for purchase in Target, Target. Sam gave and gave and gave and gave. It was hard to tell where Sam ended and Santa Claus began. Oh, you think you can tell? Well, maybe that's because you're not familiar with Santa's early years when he worked for Goldman Sachs and sold subprime mortgages. Shows your ignorance. Santa Claus also spent quality time with Gary Gensler, who is a family friend, but also happens to be the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Those two summered in the winter and wintered in the summer. They even ate thin pastrami slices off each other's bellies with Goulden's mustard, of course. F Ray Poupon. F Ray Poupon. Gary enjoyed their time together so much, he even considered granting Sam his wish which was to settle and clear his own transactions. Sure, other companies are required to use third parties, so there's no funny business. But what's so funny about eliminating some antiquated controls so a genius, a prodigy, 
can move some money around to save the world. One phrase that especially resonated with Gary was Bahamian regulators. Just saying it sends shivers down my spine. Bahamians are the SEAL Team 6 of regulators. Only the best of the best get to wear those shorts. It's also what got VC so excited about Sam and what made me take a cold shower before recording this. At the end, Sam did not get the regulations he wanted, but he did generously tip the regulators who arranged the pastrami sessions. He also took several photos with them because you see, Sam now was a celebrity. He was a star. If you look, Deeply into his eyes, you could see Tom Brady packing, packing for his wonderful trip to the Bahamas to hang out with Sam. What's up, guys? I'm here with my boy Sam from FTX. We're at Crypto Bahamas Conference. We're going to start the day. We're going to do some TikToks for you guys. And uh, it's going to be an amazing day. We'll get started. We'll do a uh, get ready with me. Sam, where are you going, bro? Just look at these two frolicking on Instagram. Gary's treachery propelled Sam to new heights. On a typical lazy Sunday afternoon, Sam was laying around in the Bahamas, creating shell companies and encrypting his collection of anime genitalia. And then it hit him. He discovered his superpower. Getting a bank account that's gonna work in finance is really hard. Um, I probably spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours of my life trying to open bank accounts. Sam may not have been impressive physically, but he had a superpower, and that was opening bank accounts. He had dedicated thousands of hours to it. He was not Sam Bankman Freed. He was Bankman, a real, live superhero. And sure, it doesn't seem like opening bank accounts could stand up to eye lasers or super strength, but I ask you, did any of the Avengers have their own stadium? Did they or did they not have their own stadium? No, they did not. Sure, you can beat up the Hulk, but you can never beat up capitalism. And it's capitalism that chooses our heroes, not Marvel. And Bankman was indeed a hero, a capitalist hero. And what's more capitalist than going out of business? Greatness is not getting your name on the stadium. Greatness is walking away with billions as the stadium burns down behind you. As FTX burned, Sam allegedly withdrew hundreds of millions of dollars. He didn't do it for himself. He did it for the children. He knew his customers would not spend it on the children. In fact, some of them may have been children themselves. FTX didn't keep any records. So Sam had to be the adult in the room a beautiful air-conditioned room overlooking the ocean in the Bahamas. Bankman, he was so busy, he didn't even have time to develop a theme song. I had to do that for him. Bankman, Bankman, Bankman. That's just a small Bankman. token of gratitude for what Sam's leadership Bankman. has meant to me. Sam's altruistic Bankman. capitalism did not end Bankman. with politicians or real estate. He also donated generously to the media. He funded publications like The Intercept and Semaphore and The Block, not because he wanted anything from them. He believed in free speech and in bringing a wholesome message of crypto to the masses. He also donated generously to countless finance YouTubers who had some of the best and most trustworthy facial hair in the world, really. When I worked in finance, we had a very clear motto. If the field is bare, get the hell out of there. I'm not 100% sure it applied to the same situation, but I remember it and it seems like wisdom and I think you should write that down just for future reference. And the media fawned over Sam. We talk about him a lot. Yeah. Sam Bankman, free. Free. Is he the Jay Gould of our era or is he the J.P. Morgan of our era? I think it's yet to be determined. Yet to be determined. Is he, the, is he Vanderbilt? He could be. Is he Harriman? Possibly. Is he the Credit Mobile scandal? Is he Carnegie? He was practically Cialis for Jim Cramer. 
He could pack a hole in a maple with that thing and get syrup. That's how excited Jim Cramer was for Sam. And even now, as Sam has his troubles and shackles, media still won't call him a fraud. In fact, the New York Times said, and Sam Bankman Freed is neither a visionary nor a criminal mastermind. He is a human who made the same poor choice that generations of money managers have made before him. Of course, they did not make a distinction between money that was supposed to be stored at a custodian like FTX versus money that was supposed to be invested by a company like Alameda. But neither did Sam. He didn't make that distinction. So this may be the fairest coverage of all. And six months before Sam was so wrongly accused of wrongdoing, one investor saw some irregularities and he came to Bloomberg Media's crypto team and said, hey, I think I see some problems here. This was six months before news of anything irregular broke. I knew something was wrong a year ago because everything this guy said, and you can play all his interviews back, nothing added up. You know, you know nothing added up. If, if people ask me a question, I will give them an answer or say, I don't know. I won't talk in a figure eight. You know, I, I won't answer a question with a non-answer again and again and again. Nothing this guy said has ever made a lick of sense. And if he would have come to my office looking for money, I would have told him to hit the bricks. I went to Bloomberg with my pal who I was working on this thing with, and we laid it out to five crypto, five ladies on the crypto team, and they passed and they said it would be too much work. We'd lose access. It's bad for business, right? They'd hang up on us if we asked these questions. Well, at least I had the questions. Wait, Bloomberg denied a story with you because they thought it would lose them access and it was too much work? Yes, 100%. When? When did this happen? This happened in July. This happened in early July. They had everything. They had everything. Wow. They, 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 they also said, but I didn't want anyone fired. I didn't want anyone fired, so I didn't give them this. They said it was bad for business, i.e. advertising. You're kidding. So, so they admit their conflict of interest with advertisers in the crypto space. Yes. Going after Bankman became bad for the bank at Bloomberg Media. And in one of his final appearances before drafting his murder-suicide note, Sam appeared at the $2,500 seat New York Times conference that featured Zelensky, Zuckerberg, and Zoloft. Bankman dropped so many truth bombs that Zelensky dove under a table thinking Russia had attacked. And after this appearance, Bill Ackman, famed investor, came out and said, call me crazy, but I think SBF is telling the truth. Kevin O'Leary, who received $15 million to promote FTX, he too sided with Sam. You reposted a tweet from Bill Ackman, essentially agreeing that you believe SBF when he says when he says that he didn't knowingly commit any wrongdoing. I guess I wonder what has you still coming to his defense when you've lost millions of dollars on this investment and when so many people have lost money here? Because I am of the group of people that says you're innocent till proven guilty. Alas, my friends, there would be no suicide or note. Because in business, suicides are surprises from billionaires. And Bankman did not surprise enough of them. Most billionaires are Luddites. They don't believe in the magic of crypto. They prefer copper in fields to copper fields. And sometimes copying a field, but mostly copper in fields. So Bankman was safe. Bankman went on to speak his truth on television, at conferences, on podcasts, on Twitter spaces, on soiled solo cups in dirty basements. And his message was always consistent. And that is, I am retarded. Here is my best guess. I don't, not to my knowledge, don't think that was the, well, to my knowledge, and, and obviously what? that was my you know high level understanding of it i don't know everything that you know i i i 
I don't remember having been asked um, about that. I'm not entirely sure. I honestly am not sure. I'm not sure exactly what people are referring to. I'm not sure you mean with the last two words. I think so, but I'm not confident. I'm not confident. I honestly don't know the details of that. Um, but, you know, anything is is possible there. Um, uh, I think there's some piece of me just wanting to speak to say my piece. It's so shameful that a prodigy and philanthropist of Sam's caliber has to demean himself and defend himself against all these accusations. Do you have any idea how many innocents will drive into ditches and ravines looking for FTX Arena? Because that's what navigation told them to do. But alas, they will have renamed it because they took away this man's pride and joy and dignity. Is Bankman dumb? Is he a criminal mastermind? Is he supremely confident in his innocence and the goodwill generated by his donations? Or is he some deranged sociopath who has no idea of the consequences of his actions? One thing is for sure, he's definitely not Jewish, Kanye and Dave Chappelle. And I say that on behalf of all of my people. Bankman is his own man, not a Jewish man. He just happens to be just a younger, sexier, potentially Bernie Madoff, but not really. So let's not make any weird connections, my friends. Personally, I don't think Sam is any of those things. Sam is Andy Kaufman. He's a crypto surrealist. He's a performance artist. He pretended to be a businessman the way Andy Kaufman pretended to be a wrestler, to teach us about ourselves. So what are the lessons that Sam taught us? Well, here are five of them. The first is he taught us about nerd privilege, which is you got to come from the right pedigree. He went to some of the best schools. His parents were both highly decorated Stanford professors. And of course, you decorate a professor with elbow pads. Everyone knows that. And they were Democratic Party activists. So they rubbed elbows with all of the right people. A big part of nerd privilege is looking the part. You got to look like a schleppy, nerdy, asperger's -y underdog. And that's exactly the persona he took on. You need to look like you live inside of a MacBook. And sure, you can go online and find a few skinny photos of Sam. But he knew that to win our trust, he had to feed himself a steady diet of Twinkies and Roofies until he could no longer intimidate us with his body. Look at his clothes. Everything was meticulous and strategic. He dressed like a 12-year-old day camper from Yeshiva Beth Israel. Who could possibly hate a nice 12-year-old Jewish boy in shorts? I like Hitler. Shut up, Kanye. He even wore shorts on stage with world leaders that he paid to help legitimize him. Clinton and Tony Blair sitting there at an FTX event in the Bahamas. I was prime minister once. I bombed Saddam. I played snooker with the queen. Now I pay rent sitting next to a bloated baby and a bloke who f***s them. Part of nerd privilege is never giving up on your dreams. Sam still dreams to someday do for shorts and Adderall what Steve Jobs did for turtlenecks and chemo. Sam also drove a Toyota Corolla. Sam doesn't need the money to buy a Lamborghini or to buy a Rolex or to impress his friends. In fact, his car is a Toyota Corolla. No one who's ever driven a Toyota Corolla has ever gotten away with anything or from anything. It's the worst getaway car. No one's more noble than a billionaire in a Toyota Corolla. Maybe a Dodge Pacer or maybe riding a partially paralyzed donkey that's been shot. Same thing, Larry David, one of Sam's heroes, once proved on his show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm Ira's wife. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Do you guys like the invention? Sure. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good, good. Any questions I had about this guy were just answered. Without a doubt. He's smart. He's good looking. He can have anybody. He chose her. That tells you everything you need to know. This guy's got integrity. I trust him now. I trust him completely. I trust him. You trust him too? I do, absolutely. How you look 
will determine how much trust you get. And nerd privilege allows you to sit next to beautiful women who would never in a million years be anywhere near you because they're not threatened. Under any other circumstances, Sam could not get within 100 yards of the beautiful people without getting tasered by a Balenciaga drone and carted away. That's part of Sam's genius. The second lesson Sam taught us is about the cloak of complexity. You can hide almost anything in plain sight if it's super complicated and super boring. And that's exactly what crypto is. On the surface, you would think this is the scandal that could bring us all together against corrupt media, corrupt politicians, and financiers that try to buy us off with bullshit. Sam would be the poster boy for that if these things were true. And yet, he's not bringing any of us together because crypto, like the Bahamas, is an island. It's too exotic for most people to understand. Crypto takes dollar transactions, which we all understand, adds a ton of jargon and extra steps and decimal places to the point where no one really understood it, including regulators. Enron was similar. The difference is that back then, there was this base level of justice that spanned political partisanship. And there was an absolute truth. Now, everything can be politicized. So one party takes one position, the other one can take the opposite and get away with it. Sam knew you could play both sides in this game. The only way anything he did would get scrutiny is if there was a video of Trump using Sam as a vibrator to massage Putin. Anything short of that, too complicated. Decimal places are kryptonite to Americans. Dear Lord, please send us a villain we can all comprehend. Amen. The third lesson Sam taught us is capitalism always wins. Crypto, decentralization, even socialism, they all eventually bow to capitalism. Nobody decentralizes human nature. And everything becomes capitalism. Whatever the game, great players will figure it out and defeat crappy players. Even those trying to dismantle capitalism, whether it's this libertarian utopia of decentralization or the, the ones who want to build a socialist state, all of them will be defeated by people who are good at capitalism because they're just good players. They're going to win in a, a bureaucratic social order, in socialism, and they're going to win in this decentralized world that they'll figure out a way to centralize. And even when they lose, they'll still feed the machine what it needs. Content, clicks, monetization. Don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash McFuture. And when all else fails, you do it the old-fashioned way. You rely on your parents' connections and reputations. That is capitalism, my friends. Social capital is capital too. The fourth lesson Sam taught us is everyone has a price. And it's not only about money. If you look at the other side of the equation, what is it that people are willing to sell for money? Dignity. Tom Brady making these pathetic videos with Sam. Larry David, who had never done commercials before, who has hundreds of millions of dollars from Seinfeld, was willing to sell or risk his artistic integrity. Or maybe he thought he made a good commercial and wasn't a big deal, but something was on the line. Tony Blair and Bill Clinton sitting on a stage with what looks like a 12-year-old day camper. Sam also knew people would sell their reputations. Media companies would gladly take his cash and subtly or not so subtly look the other way. Because when you sprinkle cash on overeducated elites, 
a bunch of English majors from very expensive schools. That's validation for them because they feel like their smarts should entitle them to the same level of success and financial reward as entrepreneurs, the people they cover, without taking any of the risk. So at some point, positive coverage wasn't even to support Sam, but to uphold their own facade, their own self-validation, which that money afforded them. They're still writing puff pieces on Sam's parents in New York Times and Wall Street Journal. Same thing with Bloomberg, although Bloomberg is primarily a, a data sales organization that has a thin veneer of journalism, so I don't expect that much from them. And of course, influencers, I, I almost feel bad for them because they probably didn't have a lot of money at some point, so it's very hard to turn things down. It's just a shame that they spent all this time filming and editing and posting and responding and engaging, doing all those things for years, sometimes with no rewards until they popped and built that reputation and trust only to piss it away, only to start promoting something that at the end carried a lot of risk and a lot of people thought was bullshit from the beginning. And the politicians, they sold their reputations, but how much was left to sell, really? Is one last payoff going to be the thing that breaks them? I doubt it. You see Maxine Waters blowing kisses to Sam. She's Teflon and she's 100 years old. So what, what, what are you going to do to her? This is the world we live in. The most vulnerable here are the crypto investors themselves. And look, a lot of them are very young and are essentially learning a very valuable and painful lesson, but their greed is more forgivable because Sam did such a great job of working the perimeter with celebrities and politicians and media to triangulate a level of trust that's almost understandable. And yeah, there's greed and people ultimately have to be accountable for mistakes they make and they will be. And at some point I did a video about how crypto is not sending their best. And we were at that stage already where the smart money was gone and the only people left were like, it goes up, I bought the one with the dog. I don't know what type of dog. And then I wrote down my code so I could open it. And then, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's a capital K or lowercase K. K is a very difficult letter. You gotta make the, the side thing higher. You know, crypto is very complicated. And, uh, you know, I follow all of the, you know, the, 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 the things and the, like I go to crypto.com and I look at the numbers. The numbers are good. I wanna buy a new house. I wanna buy a new car. And, you know. I got a family to feed. So that's why I took a second mortgage and I, I bought a token. I bought a lot of tokens. I'm a, a smoking token mother effer. I'm just making money, big money, I think. I don't know. Where's my password? What? You threw it out? You threw it out? And the easiest people, it turns out, to fool are the public. And Sam admitted as much in his text messages with a Vox reporter. The Vox reporter wrote, you were really good at talking about ethics for someone who kind of saw it all as a game with winners and losers. He wrote, yeah, he he, I had to be. It's what reputations are made of to some extent. I feel bad for those who get fucked by it, by this dumb game we woke Westerners play where we say all the right shibboleths and so everyone likes us. Sam's altruism was a very powerful veneer, especially to most who wouldn't ever do the work to examine it. And once you sell your reputation, I don't think there's any getting it back. I doubt Tom Brady will ever work as a money manager for Schwab. And Larry David probably won't direct MasterCard commercials. Not that they want to. They also have big, fat cushions to lay on. They've built up so much equity that they're going to be fine. Most other people's reputations are not very soft and cushiony. There's no memory foam there. There's just memory. The fifth and final lesson Sam taught us is control the narrative. Even after the walls were collapsing, Sam went out there to speak to the public. He wanted to 
redirect the conversation from Sam is this brilliant criminal mastermind who was on top of everything and had secret software that allowed him God mode to access everything to being, hey, I'm kind of stupid and stupid people make mistakes. I made one. Hey, all this stuff was just poorly labeled. This could have been solved with a brother P-Touch 320 label maker. And we just couldn't get one. We could not afford this label maker, which could have let us keep track of all the account files. As part of controlling the narrative, Sam even came off completely delusional. And I spoke to Sam Bankman Fried here in NASA on Friday, and despite being ousted from FTX in the company's bankruptcy, he says he's still spending most of his time still trying to broker a bailout. And he told me there are billions of dollars of potential funding out there to make customers whole, as he put it. He would go on these interviews and say, I'm going to help get them <laughs> their $10 billion back, as if someone was going to give him that kind of money, and as if he was still involved with the company. He was already kicked out. There's already another guy who was appointed to help figure all the stuff out, the same guy who was in charge of figuring out the Enron situation. He's like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do my best. I'm just, you know, I'm going to try, try my hardest. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit here shaking until I make enough crypto so people can sell it on the open market and make their money back. He's nuts. Or is he? I think he's controlling the narrative. Caroline Ellison, CEO of Alameda and hater of all things math, she was spotted in New York City shortly before Sam was arrested. She squealed to get the big fish, which is Sam. Sam, maybe you shouldn't have used Thor's dildo. The one lesson Sam himself never learned was no matter how much money you have, you can't quite pay off everybody. Even though he made so many good friends in Congress across the two political parties, where he did not apparently make enough friends was in New York, which is where all of these charges have been filed. Wire fraud, wire fraud conspiracy, securities fraud, securities fraud conspiracy, and money laundering. I think that's the value meal. Sometimes at the end, the best we can do is ask for forgiveness. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher is please forgive Sam Bagman Fried He's such a young man He did not know what he was doing Or if he did, please forgive him anyway Ashanu, Kiddushanu, Bashanu Shalom, Amen I need to brush up on my Hebrew One more thing I wanted to talk about briefly Which is all of the conspiracy theories that are going around. There is a narrative that's emerged that oh, because everyone from journalists to VC investors to major politicians uh, bought into the SBF hype, uh, that they were kind of blind to these issues. I don't buy that for a second. You know, these people were creating the hype. They knew what they were doing by promoting this, you know, late 20s, 30 year old um, uh, with, you know, zero serious um, business acumen to these, you know, these, these power pits of genius and, and, and you know, tech guru status. Um, I mean, it's what they do every time, but it does beg the question of whether he was just a front man slash fall guy for some for something else and whether it was allowed to operate um, in this kind of utterly chaotic, corrupt manner for so long without anyone asking questions. I mean, yeah. typically, yeah, that would be very difficult unless you have someone vouching for you or something. FTX had this meteoric rise. All of these political payoffs and PR stunts were just so blatant and so flashy. It came and went very quickly. It's hard to blame people uh, for thinking that there's some sort of nefarious plan. Uh, almost like um, the suspicions around the uh, protests in 2020. They were very politically convenient to make Trump look bad. And then those groups, all of them have been discredited since. BLM, the founders were, were stealing money, and now it's okay to say that <laughs> there was a lot of uh, bad actors. But at the time, it was an effective tool. So now that he's been charged, maybe that subsides a little bit. But there was a cartoon going around how the FTX collapse was perfectly timed in with the announcement of the CBDC, which is the central bank digital currency, essentially the digital dollar. You know, was this maybe set up as an entity in order to sow distrust in crypto? 
right? I mean, just to get people to, oh yeah, we're buying into it. It's like, it's all worth the hype. And then suddenly it goes belly up and everybody says, oh geez, we, crypto doesn't work, uh, which was a threat to, you know, threat to the fiat currency um, or, or, or even saying crypto needs to be regulated or the, or the government needs to come up with its own crypto, right? I mean, there's now these mm. discussions that are forming that suddenly the threat that crypto had on fiat currency is suddenly mm. maybe not even going to be a problem anymore because they're just going to, they're going to solve those problems now because of FTX. It's a theory. CBDC is a wet dream for anyone who's ever wanted to smack a pack of cigarettes or chips out of the hands of a welfare recipient, because that's the vibe. Basically, government can monitor and control where you're transacting, what you're buying, because your relationship now is no longer with a bank, but directly with the government. And such a horrible idea. It's the prelude to a surveillance state. You also don't want to dismiss why people are having these conspiratorial thoughts. Some good reasons. One is all kinds of money was being funneled, apparently, to Ukraine via Sam Bankman-Fried. They claim that only 60 million was ever raised by uh, aid for Ukraine and that this they only used Sam Bankman-Fried services to convert crypto into fiat currency in March. Now, aid for Ukraine has been accepting donations this whole time. Uh, you know, for, uh, it, it's been, it, you can even check on publicly available blockchain records. It's received millions and millions and millions of dollars. Where is this money going? Because apparently it's not being used by aid for Ukraine. Um, is it being embezzled? Is it being used for you know, black operations off books? You know, 134 so far uh, separate shell companies associated with, with Sam Bankman Freed have also uh, filed for bankruptcy. I mean, no doubt, at least some of them were used for money laundering or indeed, um, you know, a tax evasion, embezzlement. But, you know, I mean, what, you know, were there other purposes there? Again, um, you know, the, the CIA is well known to use shell companies to, to mask its operations. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, yeah, he could very, he could very easily have been a patsy uh, and specifically chosen because he was not very intelligent and didn't really know what he was getting himself into. I and mean, this is what powerful people do all the time. Is that something? Maybe. Uh, the fact that Gary Gensler who is the Securities and Exchange Commission chairman, he was recently found out to be deleting evidence of meetings with George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and Nancy Pelosi on the public version of his calendar. So uh, people wouldn't know who he was meeting with. Did they discuss FTX? Did they just have a nice coffee and donuts and maybe a little pastrami? Well, we won't know because these were stricken. And there's a reason he's deleting these meetings. I, I don't pretend to know why, but it certainly looks suspicious. But again, if you're conspiracy minded and you're putting all these pieces together, you're like, hmm, you know, that just adding to my bucket of reasons to suspect this thing for being something more. And um, just the fact that he's even talking to all of these media outlets without Johnny Cochran sitting on his lap is wild. It is just wild because no attorney under normal circumstances would allow their client to do this. And maybe it's what I talked about earlier. He was trying to shape the narrative or maybe there's some other thing going on. My skepticism about the conspiracy stuff is typically, it just requires too many people to be in on it, too many uh, people to buy off. It just even now, the fact that he's been charged shows that obviously he didn't get to everybody. So, you know, you, you leave a few loose ends and that, those are the ones you end up uh, hanging on those nooses. And ultimately, I don't blame the conspiracy theorists. I blame the people who perpetrated this and also abetted and failed to investigate it. Media is supposed to serve that function. They're supposed to ask the hard questions. They're supposed to investigate. Now you see all these forensic articles and all this stuff coming out, who cares? The time to do it was when uh, 
it, it could have been uncovered, just like the Wall Street Journal reporters did with Theranos. You shouldn't get any credit for writing a great piece about it now. Now it's too late. The time to do it was when Bloomberg supposedly received information and did nothing about it. And so when no one investigates, when politicians seem to be on the take, when people are constantly lying to you, how do you blame the conspiracy theorists? We've abandoned people to their own suspicions. We have a big job of regaining people's trust ahead of us. And I, I will say that it is encouraging that he was charged. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, it just shows that it's very hard to buy off and corrupt every single institution. That's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Please share it with others. Tell a friend. And please support the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash McFuture. And don't forget, if you can't support on the Patreon, at the very least, give the show a five-star review on iTunes. That really helps. And subscribe on YouTube. These episodes are all available on video, and this one especially is a very good one to watch. That's it. I'm Steve Factor. See you next time on the McFuture. Do you agree that over time you also lied? Do I believe, do I agree that I lied? I don't know if times when I lied, I think, look, there are certainly times when I was acting as a, um, as a representative, as a marketer for FTX. And when I was looking for uh, how can I, you know, in a way which is truthful, uh, but, you know, paint FTX as, you know, compelling a way as possible, as exciting and optimistic a way uh, as possible. And, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking about, I wasn't talking about what are the risks involved with FTX, you know, there. Right. Um, I obviously wish that I'd spent more time dwelling on the downsides and less time thinking about the upsides. As the JP Morgan, if you will, of the crypto business. The Michael Jordan of crypto, the hero right now of the industry. There's comparisons to Warren Buffett back in the financial crisis. Or if you go way back, JP Morgan in the panic of 1907, bailing out the banks before the Fed was even created. Sam Bankman Fried is trying to play the role of JP Morgan. Lives a relatively understated life for a billionaire. He drives a Toyota Corolla to FTX's offices. In the Bahamas, he lives with 10 roommates and a golden doodle named Gopher. Sometimes sleeps under a, uh, his desk on a beanbag chair as well. Sam, don't be a stranger. We love you here on CNBC. Please come around. Talk to us more often about your thought. We love checking in with you too, Sam. Uh, such a good spokesperson for the industry. Sam was a good boy. A real good boy. Real good boy. Good boy. Sam gave $50 million to their erection campaign. No, not insurrection. I said election. I got to get a new editor.